Hello. Thank you for watching Taxpayer Alert. I'm Al Segala, be your moderator. And uh, this program, just like every other one, is exciting, and we get a lot of information. And th our guest this time is Rebecca Callan, who is the city manager of Angels Camp. And she's been also a county auditor and uh, involved in a lot of other things. So we've got a lot of information for you. The uh, first thing I think we want to talk about is uh, uh, city survey and EDC survey. Yes, so the City of Angels is doing our strategic plan. So we have a community survey as well as an employee survey. That community survey is for residents and businesses, um, even visitors of Angels Camp to tell us uh, what, what they would like to see, what we're doing right, what they want to see us do differently. It's very important that people participate in that. It's open till the end of October. It's on our website, angelscamp.gov. Uh, and in addition to that, there's also another survey going on, and that is the Central Sierra Economic Development District um, survey. And that uh, group covers Calaveras, Tuolumne, Mariposa, Amador, Alpine, as well as Angels Camp and Sonora. Uh, that is really important because that's going to start determining how uh, grant programs related to economic development and infrastructure projects get allocated to various parts of the state. And we want to make sure that these rural agencies aren't forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as our new website, it's a brand new website, angelscamp.gov. It's a very user-friendly website, lots of information on there for uh, residents, visitors, businesses, how to, uh, how to move here, where to go, restaurants, uh, businesses, healthcare, libraries, you name it, it's on there. So um, please make sure you visit angelscamp.gov. Uh, it's a really great resource. Uh, another, uh, I think you have a, a shop local campaign going? Yes. So like uh, every city in the state of California and probably all over the nation as well as counties, everyone received uh, an allocation related to COVID relief monies that we could use for infrastructure recovery. Uh, so I went to our city council and asked that we could use a portion of those funds for economic development. Um, really driving help and assistance to our business community. So we're gonna do a shop local program in November, um, probably roll it into December, and that is gonna be a buy one, get one. So you can buy a community card and you get an equal value for whatever you purchase. So you purchase a $50 card, you get $50. So it doubles your shopping power. And that can be used at all uh, enrolled businesses within the city limits. So we're currently enrolling businesses right now, and it's going to be a great opportunity for people to shop in Angels Camp. I think uh, Sonora had a similar program. They did. So it's a very, it's basically the exact same program. All right, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. No. <laughs> um, the uh, you, there are several uh, big projects that you're doing. We have some really exciting projects going on, and I'm really excited. Um, we have lived in Angels Camp for a very long time, so this is really exciting. Uh, so the biggest one so far is the Utica Expansion Project. So Utica Park is the largest park in the city limits. We are currently in the process of acquiring another three and a half, almost four acres that's going to go through the middle of Leitner, the old Leitner Mine. And we are um, receiving a $3 million recreation and tourism grant through the California Parks Department, as well as $177,000 per capita grant. And the Angels Camp Community Club raised over $135,000. All of those monies will go together to uh, replace the playground equipment, make ADA bathrooms, do a pavilion, an amphitheater, um, a uh, basketball slash um, hard court, um, so it can be used for a myriad of different things, walking trails, as well as a lot of historical um, information in there. So we're really excited about that. We're also working on the Angels Creek Trail, and so that will be a bike and pedestrian trail that runs from Vallecito Road in Angels Camp through Finnegan Lane, and then we're hoping it will go all the way to Maloney's. So very exciting. And then another big project that we're in coordination with is the Habitat for Humanity development. 
that's going to be going in um, in the Capello area of the City of Angels. Uh, it's going to be about, when it's completely finished, about 170 units for workhouse, uh, workforce housing. Um, so it's it's not super low, low income, but it's 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 workforce housing because we really have a struggle trying to find housing for people that work in our area. Yeah. So this is a great opportunity for that. Is that subsidized? It is. Um, it, a big portion of the infrastructure is going to be grant funded, and then it's going to be sweat equity. So uh, those that um, qualify for the housing have to kind of put their blood and sweat into that as well, and then um, they will uh, have loans associated with the program. I see. The, uh, uh, the, the grants, are they state or federal grants? Um, the, the grants for Habitat, those would be federal. The Utica expansion is a combination between um, state and federal. Angels Creek Trail is uh, federal. Um, one of the concerns that taxpayers have when you have uh, 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 government uh, funding is the requirements or strings that are attached to it that have a tendency to shift control from our local uh, communities to the state or the federal government. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if, uh, is there a sunset on that or? <laughs> how's that? No, so all the control for all the projects stays with the city. Um, there, basically our commitment is that we will continue to maintain those um, properties. So once it's completed, we continue to maintain the park. We would continue to maintain Angel's um, Creek Trail. Um, and if we did it ourselves, we would be responsible to maintain those as well. Um, I think, you know, in the case of some of these grants, uh, yep, I'm right there with you, and there's no such thing as free money, and ultimately <laughs> it's a tax at the end of the day. Um, but either we get it or uh, another region is going to get it. So this is an opportunity for us to start building some economic um, resiliency within our area, um, which is something that we've really struggled with. Um, whether you talk about the recession or you talk about the pandemic, it seems like um, you can see recovery happen around um, us much easier than we fare. So every time we're, we're faced with some sort of issue like the Great Recession or the pandemic, we just kind of fall back and we get really impacted, our businesses and our residents, and we, we don't quite recover all the way to, to pre-pandemic or pre-recession. Um, so it, this is a this this is a way that we think we can start moving in the right direction. The uh, effect of inflation, uh, not only on gas prices but food and everything else, uh, has an effect on how much people can afford. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> so it seems like uh, anything that we could do to reduce the, the cost of government would be good for taxpayers. Yep, yep, for sure. Um, so we, we try to be extremely um, thoughtful in everything that we're doing. Um, you know, obviously we're a small city, so mm -hmm. we can't just keep raising rates. We can't keep raising fees. Otherwise, no one can afford uh, to live in our city or in our county. So we do have to find alternative mechanisms um, and our alternative ways to afford um, various things. And unfortunately, we don't get a break because we're rural. Um, so the, the state um, tends to look at rural agencies the same way it looks at metropolitan urban er areas that have um, more ability to pay for a lot of the restrictions and requirements that are placed upon them. Um, so, you know, it's kind of unfortunate sometimes we'll say, you know, we don't have the revenue generated to be able to kind of check all the boxes that you would require a more metropolitan area and they don't generally care too much. So um, we have to be pretty creative and pretty thoughtful on everything that we do. Well, that's a, that's a big, big job. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, <clears throat> and in the county, um, since you have some experience 
the only interest <laughs> cap. We're going to we have a question on the county. The county is nine million dollars in debt, and the county administrative officer said that uh, he thinks he can handle half of that, but the other half uh, has to go in the future some way. Um, that was a trajectory that I was seeing happening when I was there as well. Um, it was frustrating because um, it uh, was not getting addressed to the degree that I thought it should have been addressed when I was there either. Um, I think that uh, Craig Pedro coming to the county is just kind of um, a fantastic opportunity for the county. He has a an amazing background. Um, he's a great problem solver. I've worked with him in the past. Um, he and I are actually going to be working together to try to figure out how the city and the county can help um, uh, collaborate on some things um, so that we're not duplicating services and we're making sure that um, we're using our resources in the most eff effective and efficient manner possible. So I think it's, it's we're both looking at ways to do things a little bit smarter. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that Craig's going to be able to get them on the right path um, yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah, he's a, he does seem to be yeah. a good man. Yes. The county is very lucky to yes, have him. Yes, exactly. The only problem is <laughs> he's uh, uh, looking forward to retirement. <laughs> and he, he doesn't want to stay very long. Yeah, he wants to go so, back to to being with his grandkids, I'm sure. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so one of the things that he's looking uh, forward to is uh, to help find a replacement for yep. himself. Yep. But perhaps cleaning up some of his problems beforehand would help in attracting another... Yes. Candidate. Yes, I am sure it will. <laughs> the, uh, uh, so it looks like, uh, now how did, how did this debt get created? I, I forget. Um, it's just a matter of expanding your expenditures higher than your revenue is coming in. Oh, and so yeah, I mean, every <laughs> single year, it doesn't seem like it's that big of an issue in year one. Right. But then year two, it's double because it's the first year plus whatever you added on the second year. Right. So it's cumulative. So every year that you continue to spend more than what you're bringing in and you're eating away at your cash carrier fund balance, whichever way you want to call it, right. it just keeps digging your hole. Um, and so I'm always really careful when I'm doing you know, our budget, whether I was working at the county or at CCWD or at the City of Angels, I'm very careful in making sure that the board or the council knows we're spending one-time monies on one-time expenses. Right. We do not spend one-time monies on ongoing expenses. Right. Um, and then if you want to increase or expand your expenditures, you need to find ongoing revenue sources that are going to make that happen, or you need to figure out how to offset those increased expenditures by reducing another ongoing expenditure. Right. So you just have you to balance be, the you balance it. Yeah. Um, and I think what happened was just a combination of eyeballing teeter, <laughs> looking at um, these various revenues that came in that were unanticipated, and then projecting and thinking they're going to keep happening, and they don't. So it's kind of like Wisdom 1A. Yeah. Hey, uh, I understand that uh, uh, it might be RCRC, RC. One, uh, uh, one of the supervisor organizations uh, has a, a training program for supervisors. And it might be uh, possible that new supervisors uh, can go through this training program. Apparently it's pretty thorough. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I think there's a lot of training programs out there for boards and, and councils. The unfortunate part is through the pandemic, there were no trainings. Right. And then uh, in the middle of it, they were moving over to online trainings. It's just not the same. You don't get the same interaction and networking capabilities um, that you would in person. Mm -hmm. So it's just been really unfortunate for any any board member or council member that came into office during the pandemic because they've kind of they missed that onboarding mm -hmm. portion. Yeah. Um. Now, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, CCWD. There was uh, an issue not long ago with CCWD. I understand there was a proposal 
by a company that uh, uh, takes raw sewage and converts it to uh, um, to compost. Okay. And and uh, a group was organized to oppose that, and I went to two meetings in uh, in the Copper Cove area where where this is supposed to be going on, and. Uh, do you, do you have any uh, new information about that at all? I don't. Um, I just know, just just like we at the city, you know, uh, you have biomass. Yeah. That's that's the outcome of having to deal with treatment of sewer yeah. um, and wastewater. And so it's it's an issue that we all have, which is what to do with the biomass. Right. So a lot of agencies end up trucking the biomass out of county to facilities to handle that biomass. Right. It's very expensive to truck it out. Um, it's expensive to deal with it. Um, so you know, I, I know that a lot of agencies have historically looked at um, what to do with that biomass, whether it's or biosolids, if you do a biomass project in, uh, in terms of, of uh, kind of turning it into more of an energy generation, um, different types of things, it just, it, it's hard to pencil out to do a biomass facility um, with those biosolids. And um, I think that there's just not enough support um, for it because it's, it, it doesn't, it, it has to be subsidized to a to a degree because it just doesn't pencil out without it. Oh, I understand CCWD uh, is interested in lease income because they already have land, mm -hmm. and uh, this could allow for less upward pressure on our rates for sewer and, and water. Yeah, yeah, uh, which is a good thing. Yep, just like what the City of Angels does with UWPA. Um, UWPA, we ultimately get our water through Utica Water Power Authority as well as um, UPUD is, does as well. But part of what subsidizes that water is the hydroelectric that UWPA produces. So it's a way to help offset those rates to ratepayers. Uh, hopefully uh, the uh, cool heads will get together on that. We've had a lot of uh, of a uh, of fear of odors or tr uh, truck traffic and those sort of things. Yep. But the uh, study that CCWD found that that was not a not a concern. You're talking about ten uh, round trip truck trips on Little John Road per day, mm -hmm. and uh, which is almost nothing. Yep. Yeah. So. Uh, Okay, well, that's going to have to work itself out. Yep. And since you're not in C C CWD anymore, we can't look at you for intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, uh, the, the state uh, uh, has some water regulations that, uh, and plus green regulations that are having an effect on uh, not only the counties, but also the cities. Is that true? That is true. So uh, there's there's a lot of different regulations that are coming into play right now. We've got uh, greenhouse gas uh, plans that we're having to work on. We have um, obviously drought contingency plans um, that we're having to identify and work on, as well as um, edible waste uh, programs that we're having. To edible do. waste. Edible waste. So if you're like you a, eat the waste. If you're a grocery store. Um, you have produce or you have uh, food that you can't sell, you have to start looking for ways to uh, eliminate that waste oh, oh, or oh. find food ways, waste. food waste, or okay. find ways to back up the, um, that sales uh, calendar so that it can be donated or um, some other way in order to keep it out of the landfills. Um, so it, it's, uh, it, but of course those regulations, whatever they are, especially for rural agencies, there's no funding um, in order to implement any of that. So mm -hmm. you've already got a very stretched um, budget and staff as it is, and then we're trying to figure out how we're going to start doing all of the regulations and enforcement on those new programs. It, it looks like you might need to build uh, compost bins and uh, 
<clears throat> which will make a compost a good product. It is, um, but it's bigger than that because if you think of the, the sizes of the um, grocery stores, and in the city of Angels, we've got the two you know main grocery stores. Right. Um, it's it's Save Mart has a program, um, but it's going to have to be even larger than the program that they've currently been doing. So it's it's trying to work through that um, with no additional funding. Hmm. Well, the um, so. So the state regulations, that would go under the green so regulation. There's greenhouse gas um, emission regulations, and then there's also uh, the regulations associated with CalRecycle, and that's that edible food waste program. We were able to get an exemption for the organic waste um, that was going to be required, and it is required in, in larger agencies and jurisdictions. Um, because our population is so small for Calagaras and the City of Angels, we were able to get an exemption off of that, um, but we're not exempted from um, any large restaurants um, or any large venues that feed more than 250 people or the grocery stores. And 250 people a day? Mm hmm. Hmm. Uh. It's hard to uh, to understand for me to understand how a state regulation can force a restaurant to put in compost bins if that's what they're... they they I think the ultimate goal is to reduce the food that gets created to begin with. Um, I think that's ultimately what's going to happen. Um, because there's just there's not enough composting that you can do, and there's not enough um, uh, there's not enough time to don't find someone to donate the food to, um, and then you've got their storage issues, and then they've got to deal with the compost and the edible right. food waste. So it's kind of almost backing up the whole um, process of how groceries work. Yeah. Until ultimately, it kind of goes back to probably the olden days, where you would have to go to the grocery store every day, um, and not uh, buy the amount of, of food that we buy today. Yeah, I have two chickens, and and two compost bins, and so I have no problem with scraps. <laughs> yep, yep. That's that's ultimately what they want to see. So mm -hmm. they they want to see people fed. Um, who are um, are sensitive groups that that don't have the the economy to feed themselves, um, and then ultimately it would go to animals. But everything is to keep it out of the landfills. Now I understand that uh, there's charities that <clears throat> concern themselves with helping people, mm -hmm. and um, like seniors and mm -hmm. other other ones that are not involved with government. Uh, uh, and so would this uh, take the place of that? We would be looking into all of them. So it's it's not just going to be, you know, the resource connection. It's going to be looking at faith-based organizations and any other organizations that are feeding um, seniors or veterans or um, people of a lower income demographic that don't have the ability to, to fend for themselves in terms of food. Um, and you know the the bottom line is I think uh, the average uh, American household is spending four hundred dollars a month more on groceries today than they were prior, um, just because of inflation. So that is really putting a huge burden on our our residents um, because of the dollars just not going as far as it used to. So it's four hundred a month. Four hundred a month. Yeah. Yep. So I, I think that it's it's. I think that demographic of those people that aren't able to feed themselves the way that they used to be able to is growing. Um, so we're going to have to work pretty diligently to find those avenues for people to get the food. It may be that we're going to get slimmer. Yes, that's <laughs> true. I uh, know in my case I want to lose another 10 pounds. I used to uh, <clears throat> be 225 and I got down to 175. And I'm still not happy. <laughs> well, you look great. <laughs> I'm looking better, better. Problems are getting older and older. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, 
one of the considerations um, on green type uh, uh, laws is um, an assumption that uh, carbon dioxide uh, causes global warming. And uh, uh, it looks like recently uh, there's like 14, over 1,400 scientists, uh, climate scientists, that disagree with that, saying that there is no uh, global warming crisis, and then CO2 is not a poison, it's actually a nutrient. Which means if, uh, if you give a loved one flowers, you gotta say thank you to CO2. <laughs> yeah. We have uh, about three minutes left uh, to talk about some hot topic items that you might be interested. What would you like to discuss? Um, I just want to say uh, I started with the city in February, so this is my ninth month. Um, we're just doing a lot within the city. We're trying to grow um, our businesses. We're trying to fill in downtown. Um, we're trying to make Angels Camp be back to what um, those of us that have lived there for a very, very long time remember Angels Camp to be where downtown was really booming. Um, you could get everything that you needed um, downtown and within the city. And we um, have, have not been in that place for quite a while. So, um, you know, we're, we're open for business. We're looking for businesses. So if anyone is interested in coming to the city, um, we would love to have you and work with you and support you as a business and um, make Angel's Camp be what we all remember it used to be. Oh, that's very good, Rebecca. The, uh, one of the things that you touched on is that there's going to be some thought about uh, avoiding duplicated services between the county and the city. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to think of what, what sort of services uh, could be better handled by uh, a larger structure like the, like the county. Or uh, I don't think the city has its own water department, does yeah, it? Yeah, we do. We have our own water, we have our own sewer, um, we have our own building and planning department, our own police department, our own fire, um, our own public works. Um, so, but the pieces that we don't have, we don't have animal services, we don't have any health and human services. Um, we don't uh, have um, our, our, our OES, we basically rely on our fire department and we rely on the county OES. Um, so oh, Office of Emergency mm -hmm. Services. So there are things that we would like to coordinate with to ensure that we have um, appropriate coverage and training um, and services available to our residents. So uh, Craig and I will be working through those things and talking about them and I'm, I'm looking forward to those next steps. Thank you, Rebecca, and thank, thank you. you for being our guest. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching Taxpayer Alert.